Folks, we've decided to start closing our business on Sunday. We like to go to church and we want our employees to have a day off that they can go to church and that they can spend with their families. So y'all come see us Monday through Saturday, nine to six, and enjoy your stay in our Great Smoky Mountains. I'm here with Katie Barnes, who is so talented and creative and just does the most amazing designs for us in the shop. Katie, tell us about your process. Well, um, right here I'm doing one of my more simple designs where I'm putting the leaves on and first I just place them with the water where I want them to be. And then I go back and roll them into the, to the clay uh, to make, leave the impression um, where they sit. Sometimes I have to move them around and get them to where they're placed better, to where they look good. And then I roll them in and then I'll start cutting around them eventually once they're placed and rolled in. And then they'll be cut out around the rim and it'll be a nice decorative bowl that you can put fruit in or leave as a centerpiece um, with potpourri in the center of it just cut out and you have to be careful don't you to make sure that the piece is still going to be sound and not break right in the process so you have to be careful where you cut out around the leaves and leave a good thickness where the rim is so as you can see I pulled down the leaves so that they're not touching the rim so that I can uh, cut out around it better to leave it nice and thick and stable around the rim of the pot. And so many people are surprised when they see that we use real leaves in the pieces. Um, and I love that. It's a piece of nature right there on the pottery. Yes, yeah, a little piece of Gatlinburg you can take home with you in every piece. So cutting out a thick bowl like this sometimes takes two or three times to get that piece of clay out of there. It's harder. Sometimes you have to go back and cut it around it again. You can see how thick it is. So eventually it'll be completed. Thank you.
Come see us, folks. We'd love to see you. Uh, this is our whole life is built around this business. And we got a lot of pretty pots, and we want you to come by and see what we've got to show you. <laughs> you have no idea what you're making, huh? No idea. <laughs> Going, oh, what did I make? Made a bowl for Jello. Okay. Jello bowl. Do you like Jello? Stretch it one more time. There we go. Ah. Play it into these hands. Get to these hands. These hands. <laughs> <laughs> For more information, entertainment, and fun, tune in to My Smokey TV channel 195. Folks, we've decided to start closing our business on Sunday. We like to go to church and we want our employees to have a day off that they can go to church and that they can spend with their families. So y'all come see us Monday through Saturday, nine to six, and enjoy your stay in our Great Smoky Mountains.
Hi folks, this is Ayla Wine Pottery and you're watching us on the Craftsman's Channel on My Smokies TV. Growing up with my dad as a potter, I always loved to, to be at the pottery shop. It's just one of my favorite childhood memories. My dad was always a potter, so um, it's, it's just what we know how to do. And I love that my kids get to experience that same um, joy and fun of just being able to come up to the shop and play in the clay. Audrey has really taken to throwing and she loves to make spoon rests that we sell for a profit for St. Jude in our fundraising um, for that hospital. She just has a passion to be able to give back to that hospital um, as a St. Jude patient herself and um, I, I just love that this is something that she can do and a way to give back and she has so much fun with it. So we are really proud of her in this effort. And we just all have such a great time when we come up.
This is the heart of the mountains. There is little here that spells civilization. Here at the southern end of the Appalachians, a place has been set aside. Here, man and nature are not in conflict, but in harmony. This harmony of man and nature was one of the goals realized in the autumn of 1940. Then a vast tract in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee and North Carolina was dedicated as a national park. As President Franklin D. Roosevelt said, to the free people of America, I dedicate this park. This is the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. This, the 21st National Park of America, borders Tennessee and North Carolina, which means that over 120 million people are within 700 miles of the park, as this radio shows. But although the Smokies are only a day's drive away from two-thirds of the nation's population, Nearness alone would not explain the powerful attraction that draws more than five million visitors to these mountains each year. Certainly, Great Smoky Mountains National Park must have a wide range of attractions and facilities to draw such a large number of visitors. Just what is it they find here? They find 800 miles of some of the nation's most beautiful wilderness a kaleidoscope ranging from the 6,000-foot peaks of Mount Leconte and Klingman's Dome to the rugged forests below. This is a land rich in beauty, rich in waterways, 600 miles of stream and river. To preserve and protect the beauty of this area, the Park Service moved into the Smokies. Theirs is a double job, to administer the care of the park with its resources and wildlife, and to give assistance and guidance to park visitors. Visitor centers, such as Sugarlands, have been set up to aid the park's visitors and inform them about the area's resources and the necessary park regulations. The rewards of this cooperative program are evident. Today, visitors to Great Smoky will enjoy every facility that the park offers. Tomorrow, new visitors will find these same facilities available unmarred by human carelessness or thoughtlessness. Cooperation makes it possible. The pioneer heritage of the Smokies is a living thing. The new generations of mountain folk live on in communities like Cades Cove. The old structures are maintained, and many, the cable mill as an example, are still in use. The mountaineer's legacy to the Smokies is no museum piece, but a living thing that continues as surely as a stream. Skilled pioneer hands built this home. The skilled hands of their descendants have kept it in its original condition. Materials such as roofing shingles or shakes are still cut by hand with fro and mallet from solid bolts of oak, just as it was done a century ago. Likewise, many mountain families still spin their own wool yarn from the wool of their own sheep and weave or knit it into garments themselves. The independent mountain families still carry on the old ways in farming the land. Sorghum, an important crop, is still crushed by horsepower into juice and pulp. On the other hand, there are a few show-offs in every crowd and the animal kingdom is no exception. The black bear often behaves very much like a spoiled child,
continually trying to gain the attention of human visitors. Of all the park's year-round inhabitants, the bears are the most sociable, playful, and adventurous. Generally, they aren't upset by the presence of people and concentrate on having a good time. It is a violation of park regulations to feed, tease, frighten, or molest the bears in any way. The people who visit Great Smoky can also concentrate on having a good time. The park offers 17 camping areas, like the popular Elkmont. From the convenience of a campsite, visitors enjoy several forms of recreation. The abundant waterways have made the stream sides a favorite with many visiting families. Here they can refresh themselves by relaxing in the summer sun. Or by taking a cooling dip in the clear waters from the mountains. And many a visitor to Great Smoky has found still another attraction in these clear rivers and streams. For the waters are the haunts of trout. In such a setting, a person might never tire of the thrill of angling for them. Even when you haven't had a good strike all morning, there's something satisfying about being able to just relax out here in the open with a good rod and a good friend.
So Charlie, you look pretty excited here to make this pot with Papa. Are you excited about it? Yeah. Do you like making pottery with Papa? Yeah. Why do you like it? Because it really like feels good for your hands. Yeah. And I kind of like how like it gets your hands dirty because it feels good. You like the messy feeling? Mm -hmm. It feels smooth, doesn't it? Yeah. Kind of slimy. So what are you doing here I'm on your piece? making a jewelry bowl. Oh, for jewelry. Are you trying to make a design on the top there? Yeah. Yeah? Like a swirly pattern. I kind of tried to make the outside big and have a little circle and I wanted the inside to be really big so it can fit a, a couple of a more jewelry than how I made it. And who did you make this for? My teacher. Nice. I think she will really like it. Folks, we've decided to start closing our business on Sunday. We like to go to church and we want our employees to have a day off that they can go to church and that they can spend with their families. So y'all come see us Monday through Saturday, nine to six, and enjoy your stay in our Great Smoky Mountains. late 18th century, a widow woman by the name of Jane Ogle and all her children wandered into a little valley on the northern edge of a mountain range in what was then the unsettled eastern part of an area soon to be called Tennessee. Upon arriving, she fashioned a rough house out of the abundant forest timber nearby, cleared a small plot of land to grow food for her family, and erected a barn to store the food she had grown. 
Being a poor woman and having recently lost her husband, Jane was looking for a place to build a new life without the encumbrances of the new world society. Upon completion of her house and barn, that was all she thought she'd achieved. Jane had no way of knowing at the time that in addition to building a new home, she had also begun building the gateway for what would be 200 years later, the most visited mountain resort area in the entire world. Jane Ogle had commenced building Gatlinburg, Tennessee, the magnificent entrance to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. The nature of the mountaineer demands that he have solitude for the unhampered growth of his personality. Wing room for his eagle heart. No one can understand the attitude of our highlanders toward the rest of the earth until he realizes their amazing isolation from all that lies beyond the blue, hazy skyline of their mountains. There are still people who remember. Seemed like man gets to thinking about it with all us talking about the good old days and you've heard the expression we live back in the good old days well that's right it may be good old days a hundred years from now i don't know looking now but it ain't nothing like it used to be when i was a boy although uh, we did hit it hard you talk about money money is just about something that you didn't have we had to work we all depended on wood too up there and uh, there was no coal, there was no oil, there was nothing except firewood, you might say. So uh, if a person got sick with the flu or got sick with uh, uh, something that he couldn't uh, do his own wood getting, then we would uh, all gather up and get him wood up, maybe to, enough to do him uh, uh, a week or so. Maybe in that time we'd hope that he would uh, uh, be out. Then when we'd come to our farming, we'd find that uh, help one another with the crops. Girls on this side, boys over here. That's the way they did in the old days. Boys, girls, 1882. I was wondering if anybody was really looking 1882. Well, if it was built in 1882, then uh, how old is the schoolhouse? 91 years old, right. For more information, entertainment, and fun, tune into My Smoky TV channel 195. one of Robert's beautiful lamps and it will be a cutout lamp that's going to have a uh, light on the inside to so where you can see the light shining through the leaves um, from the inside when I'm finished but right here you can see I'm deciding where to put the leaves and I finally end up putting them somewhere and then rolling them in and cutting out all the way around each leaf so that each one will have light shining through and be, um, it'll probably be red when it's finished, mountain with some blue, that's one of our prettiest combinations on our lamps. So you'll have to come in and see it when it's finished.
the Smoky Mountain because I'd been a guide all my life to fishermen, hunters, and so forth. And before the park, National Park, was ever talked of. My daddy sent me out at eight years old and I've been a guide ever since. But then later the park come about and so they gave me a badge, number one guide, because I knew the Smokies and the trails and I hope lay out all the boundary line. And uh, seeing as I was, I was here before the park ever thought of. I've had lots of experience. One time I had uh, went over a mountain to a logging camp, was cutting timber, and they wouldn't give me a job because I was too young. Said, boy, we could use you. The man said, but said, you're, you're too young, and it's a violation of law, and said, you'll have to go back home and wait a few years. Now, a lot of people want to know if I ever got lost. Of course, I've never exactly been lost, but I've been bothered for two or three days a few times. But I got out. If I hadn't, I wouldn't have been here. But now they're going to tell you about getting lost. I know a man that was lost. He was missing for two years, and I'd passed her home. This old lady would cry and said, Wiley, be on the lookout for my husband somewhere in the Smokies. You might run on his bones, and if you'd find the skeleton, well, let me know. But two years later, they found a skeleton, and he was identified, these bones were by a gun and watch and a little bit of change. And was, they brought him in and buried him. Now, that man was really lost. Maybe I'll tell you a little about the bears out in the mountain. I've met lots of them. And that's what I tell the tourists when they ask me what to do in case you meet one on a trail. I tell them, stand still for a little while, and, and if that bear don't run, why for them to run? <laughs> and you'll have no trouble. You might wonder why. It might be a mother bear with little and there's no run to it. You just will to give her the right of it. Because I've tried it out. Come very near getting killed two or three times with their mother, so I'm afraid of them. I just leave them alone, and they can have the right of way. And one time I watched one teaching the little ones to climb, and she she first goes up herself a little ways, and then come back down. I just wasn't here grunting to them, you know, but I don't know what them grunts meant. But anyway, she picked the little one up and just put it up on the side of the tree, and. It went up a piece and then come back, just like she did. Then she got old the second one and put it up on the tree and it just stuck her. Wouldn't even go and drink her. She'd just come over with her four paw and let him have it right in the rear end. <laughs> Grub like to run out the top of the tree, just a squalling and crying. They cry just like a baby, don't they? Lord, it's like a baby. And I wonder now what in the world will happen. Folks, we've decided to start closing our business on Sunday. We like to go to church and we want our employees to have a day off that they can go to church and that they can spend with their families. So y'all come see us Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6, and enjoy your stay in our Great Smoky Mountains.
Y'all be sure and check out the Craftsman's channel. Come see us, folks. We'd love to see you. Uh, this is our whole life is built around this business. And we got a lot of pretty pots, and we want you to come by and see what we've got to show you. So the final step in the process is the glazing process, which is so important because if you don't have a beautiful finish on your piece, you just have a dud of a pot. So Katie, why don't you tell us about your favorite glaze combinations? Well, m one of my favorites is being shown here on <clears throat> one of my bare pots that is being glazed by Brandon. And it's the beautiful Timaku bottom where it's really dark on the bottom and then he's going to go back and put our Miami with Lady Blue on the top which is a really bright blue so you kind of have that like snow scene with the dark mm -hmm. and then the real bl bright blue almost white on top um, I love contrasting colors so that's why I like that one a lot um, that's one of my favorites too I love how it runs it, yeah if you love don't, it if you don't have that run <laughs> it's not as pretty but the uh the reds obviously are another those are probably my second favorites i like that one as a uh centerpiece but you have to have some red in there somewhere so that with red on the bottom is also one of my favorites yes. which is our mountain glaze yes and um it's done pretty much the same way but he brings the red up and then he'll have that real pretty purple band mm -hmm. when you put that Miami over that looks top like of the, the mountains which is why we call it our mountain glaze yeah the sunset that red and purple and blue sort of color gradient exactly. is so lovely and just looks like the a perfect picture of the mountain scene so that's probably my favorite ones but we have so many it's hard to decide which ones are my yeah, favorite. I'm really proud of our glazes. I love our colors. I love the different combinations. They're endless, all the things that we can do. And I love how um, Brandon experiments with things and comes up with the coolest color combinations. Um, does such a great job. He does. There's, he's been doing it for so long. He's just so good at it.
One of our big items in the last couple of years are these bacon cookers. I, I'm always amazed at the love affair this country has with bacon, but they work really well. And the, the mixing bowls, I can I, sometimes I'll hear women standing in there and there'll be five of them stirring in that thing at one time to hear that noise. Well, they're so handy. There's so much you can do with a mixing bowl. It's my favorite wedding gift for a new couple. The leaves have carried our business for so long. I've been, I started doing these leaves in 1997 and Lynn and I were at a craft show together and we, we got the idea from, from a, a, a vendor there and uh, it, it has become our trademark. People recognize our leaves. I tell folks all the time, they fall off in the fall, but nobody believes me. <laughs> Oh, we have the best mugs. Oh, God. We have the most, I can tell you that. Y'all don't even know. You've got to try one to know it. It is the best mug. Make your coffee taste better. Absolutely. And calorie-free, right? Calorie-free. You can drink all the hot chocolate you want. <laughs> These are Rebecca pictures. It's uh, from a scripture in the Bible about Rebecca at the well. Very traditional mountain shape. Cades Cove has to be one of our favorite places to go. We love to see the cabins there. It's a childhood memory of ours. And we love having those cabin pots with the cabins of Cades Cove on them. Our sales girls are always willing to help. They're very friendly. We want you to come out here and have a good experience with us. 
We don't take your business for granted. We've got so many great memories of the kids being up here. It's just one of our favorite, favorite things. Our shop is always changing. We are artisans and we love to experiment with new ideas. We have the most creative team that's always trying to come up with something new and exciting to show you. So we would love for you to come and visit us and check out the new products and just enjoy the feel of the shop. <laughs>